Hello friends has access to all of humanity's information in the palm of his hands and still chooses to watch only YouTube videos of monkeys falling here, bringing you another Dota 2 video in which we're going to be talking about four myths believed only by bad Dota players. Number one, Quelling Blade is only for melee heroes. In the distant past, Quelling Blade was seen as almost a crutch item used exclusively by people who were bad at last hitting. Then people realized that this was stupid logic because so long as two people are identically skilled, the hero with higher damage will get all of the last hits. People also collectively realized that QB doesn't work on denies, meaning that if two heroes have identical damage and also Quelling Blades, both will have an advantage on last hits over denies. In other words, with a QB, it's almost impossible to get crushed in last hitting, because while your enemies might have a damage advantage for last hits, they won't for denies. To be fair though, in the past, Quelling Blade didn't give quite enough damage to justify buying it on ranged heroes, at least for the cost. But between 7.27 and 7.29, the ranged bonus got buffed from 5 to 6, and the melee bonus was nerfed from 18 to 12. Additionally, the cost was reduced from 150 to 130. So, yes, this item is still ludicrously cost-effective on melee heroes. In fact, it's twice as effective for melee heroes over ranged heroes. But, even still, Quelling Blade is the most efficient creep damage item that you can buy on ranged heroes. Consider a typical agility ranged hero for example. Quelling Blade gives you 6 creep damage for 130 gold. Two Slippers of Agility gives you 6 creep damage for 280 gold. That is, Quelling Blade is more than twice as effective than the next best alternative on ranged heroes. As a final note, Quelling Blade is also a god tier item for supports as well, because you can use it to place clever wards and to cut through all of the new tree juke paths that were introduced in 7.29. Number 2. Dewarding is the position 5's job. A long time ago, dewarding was this tedious job given to the 5 position, mainly because it costed precious time and gold. The entire team did benefit from dewarding strategically, but there was no other reward. Back in the day, resources spent by the 5 position were considered the least valuable out of all of the roles. So, naturally, the job of dewarding fell upon these poor souls. Other than when 5's are close to key items, this is still largely considered to be true. Five positions do take the lowest farm priority. And so, people still incorrectly believe the myth that exclusively the five position should be the one dewarding. But a number of things have changed in Dota that make dewarding the job of every position in the game. First, sentry wards cost 50 gold, as opposed to the 100 gold that they used to cost. Second, killing an observer ward grants a base 100 gold plus four per minute as opposed to granting literally nothing. This means that, worst case scenario, you make 100% profit by dewarding an observer ward. Third, barring abusing glitches that I've talked about in previous videos, sentry wards were changed such that they only grant observer ward bounties to the person who purchased the sentry. In other words, supports can't easily gift sentries to their carry such that the carry gets all of the support's precious deward gold. Thus, the correct play these days is to, if you know that there is an enemy ward somewhere, you should deward it, no matter what your role is. In fact, Technically speaking, the carry should be the one that is ideally dewarding all of the obvious wards because it gives them so much gold, so long as it's not straying away from their farming path. Number three, pulling is the support's job. To this day, I hear core players complain that their supports don't pull in their pubs. On the flip side, I hear support players complain that their carry always dies when they're pulling. But in both of these cases, this mentality is just kind of old. Pulling used to be the job of the support back when people sucked, and the job of the core was to get all of the last hits in the lane. But things have evolved since then. Players in general have gotten significantly better. Not only is CSing the job of both the core and the support, particularly with ranged creeps, but so is pulling. If both cores are farming the lane and the supports are fighting at the pull, Typically, it will be impossible for any support to pull the lane back because all the other support needs to do is use creep aggro and the pull will be interrupted. So, the meta has evolved where, ideally, the support pulls the lane back while the core sits between the lane and the jungle blocking the enemy support from contesting. 
In even higher tier games, it's not just the supports that pull. Usually, the better hero at zoning zones and the better hero at pulling pulls, regardless of the role. The funny thing is, it sounds stupidly simple when it's phrased like that, but still, it's not something you see happen very often. For example, if you have an Undying plus Luna lane, Undying is the 5 and Luna is obviously the carry unless you're in Herald, but Undying is way better at zoning because of Decay and Luna is better at pulling because she's a ranged hero. So that's what you should do. Number 4. High ground wards are always good. Naturally, it makes sense that one would assume that high ground wards are inherently better than low ground wards because they give more vision, and vision is good, right? Well, not always. The problem with allied vision is that the enemy team can sometimes use it to manipulate things in their favor. For example, in the mid lane, if you have a high ground ward, then the enemy mid laner can right click you and draw creep aggro up the hill. Most of the time, the vision of the enemy mid laner is worth the cost of them being able to pull aggro. But in some cases, such as when you're playing against melee heroes, they have to walk into vision to last hit anyway, so you're always going to have vision of them. So high ground vision only provides them a way to pull creep aggro in their favor. Moreover, if you're planning on pushing the lane and farming, then a high ground ward, once again, isn't that important because you're basically not laning anyway. In both of these cases, you should place your ward somewhere more useful such as on the runes or an eye spot that is better at scouting ganks instead. Wow. Another place where high ground wards are not necessarily good is when they can be easily revealed and dewarded by using tower vision. If you plan on placing a high ground ward and leaving the area undefended, then you may want to consider placing it on a good low ground location so that the enemy support can't just do the out of vision tower aggro trick to score a free dewarded. Another place where high ground vision can be similarly abused is with creep aggro. In the exact same way someone can score a free D ward by abusing tower vision, you can use creep aggro to test for a number of common ward spots on the high grounds. So if you want to place vision that you can be absolutely sure won't get D warded, low ground alternatives might be the play. Anyway, that's it for this video. In case anybody is wondering where the content has been for the last month, uh, why have I not posted any video for three weeks, the honest-to-god reason is that BSJ's lawyers once again sent me a cyst and desist letter that said, uh, do not spread lies about BSJ. I said something about him eating squirrels alive from the tail up, and uh, unfortunately that's not true. He eats them whole, uh, and so because that was falsified information, they took all of the profits on my videos for this month, and so I decided to very uh, passive-aggressively not post any content so he couldn't take those profits. So if you guys could uh, go ahead and unsubscribe from BSJ and subscribe to the Jenkins Dota uh, channel family, uh, that would be really good, and I would really appreciate that.